just want to make a quick follow-up to this video I made this morning about hate crime. Partly because I've just been watching Gary's video, one of his variety packs, where he just mentions this uh, this video I made. Uh, I think what... Yeah, I guess, because I came across in that video, I think, as being uncertain about hate crime. Now, you know, I'm completely uncertain about it. Or I certainly was when I made the video. I've got a bit more information about it now. And... Uh, probably came across like I was saying that hate crime was a stupid idea. I don't think it's a stupid idea at all. I, can, I think there's something very stupid about the way it's framed or the way it's discussed. I've been looking at a couple of other videos today. Halcyon sent me a couple I had looked at. One is to do with, uh, I don't know, some guy, I can't remember his name now, talking about how hate crime was a kind of thought crime. And I think that's really telling actually, because I think a lot of people do think of hate crimes like that. Uh, what this guy was saying in this video, Nat somebody, I can't remember, was that uh, it's, it's kind of two crimes because the, the, the initial crime itself, let's say, is a crime of violence and then there's the initial crime of hating somebody. Uh, and I can quite, and, 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 you know, when it's framed like that, of course, it makes perfect sense. It, it sounds like double jeopardy, it sounds like, well, I don't know, it sounds like, it, it does sound like a personal thing. Because hate is an emotion, it's a thing that an individual person has, it's like an attitude, it kind of, it's something you own in the way that you own your thoughts. It does feel inappropriate when it's framed like that to talk about it, you know, as a, as a valid idea. But that's not the way it's, the only way it can be looked at. In fact, I think that's probably the least useful way of looking at it. I think there's a couple of other ways of looking at it which are, which are more helpful. The first thing is, you know, I think there is a way of looking at it as two crimes, but quite validly as two crimes. One of which is the, obviously a crime against a person, and that poor lad, Matthew Shepard, who got beaten up and killed by those two stupid homophobic guys. Yes, of course, there was a crime of violence carried out against Matthew Shepard, and quite rightly they uh, got two, two life sentences as a result of that. Uh, but I think there's also this other crime, which is a crime against the homosexual community. Uh, now, obviously, free speech allows people to say all kinds of insulting things about gay communities or anybody else. But uh, but free speech ends at the point of another person's chin. You know what I mean? And I think as soon as you um, you start making violent gestures on uh, carrying out acts of violence on representative members of a community because they are representative members of a community then that's a separate crime it seems to me I'm not sure it should be legislated as such but it does seem to me there's definitely a different activity going on there which uh, you know if you're dwelling on the idea of hate crime as thought crime and just belonging within that individual transaction of one victim and, uh, and one criminal doesn't it, 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 that doesn't capture it, I don't think. Uh, the other thing about hate crime, and I think it's it's more pragmatic really, is that just like all um, legislation, the whole point of it is to to set values in the society and to steer behaviour. You know, the state has got a number of ways of assigning values to activities and to uh, kind of managing and organising behaviour, you know, economic ways of doing it uh, and, and indeed legislative and judicial ways of doing it. And uh, and if we are saying that we as a society, or the US in this case, as a society, uh, values the idea that, that uh, not only, that whilst individuals might have all kinds of arguments amongst themselves, groups of people should not be uh, discriminated against. And of course that should be reflected in the legislation. It might or might not be a specific aspect of legislation. There might not necessarily be a, a particular bill or a particular uh, particular law in the statute books called hate crime, but it should definitely be a, a feature of uh, of sentencing, for example. Cause, I mean, it is for already for many other things. I mean, certainly in the UK, uh, it's not particularly something I particularly like, but uh, crimes against property are often sentenced more severely than crimes against the person. Particularly crimes against children, actually. I don't know, I guess, you know, there's a bit of flurry in the papers occasionally about that. But people who commit crimes against property, particularly, you know, those people who get away with millions, if they get away with it, and are subsequently caught, 
you know, they're, they're, the jail sentences they get for that, for crimes against property, are usually much more severe, you know, than the guy who uh, goes out and rapes a couple of kids. Uh, and that says something very significant, I think, about values, and indeed, I think, Steer's behaviour in very particular kinds of ways gets people to do cert to think certain ways and act certain ways in relation to property and act certain ways in relation to children. And I think the same is true with something like hate crime legislation. Uh, we're saying something very particular, I think, in a, in a, in a society which doesn't recognise the possibility of crime carried out or even just exacerbated because of differences in uh, in, uh, in how people view one another as groups. You know, if that's not part of our statutes, if that's not part of our sentencing procedures, then we're in a kind of weird state of denial about it, it seems to me. Yeah, I just think that whole hate crime is thought crime is just bollocks, really.